Aging is a part of life, and advances in public health have made it possible to live longer. In the United States, 10,000 people per day turn 65, and persons 65 and older represent about 15% of our population. By the year 2030, almost a quarter of Indiana's population will be 60 or older. As you age, you need to start thinking about how to age well by taking care of yourself on different levels. Healthy aging is defined by the White House Conference on Aging as continuing to live a productive, meaningful life by having the option to stay in one's home, remain engaged in the community, and maintain social well-being. Good evening, I'm your host, Dr. Jeff Byrne. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Wellness Matters on Aging Well. Healthy aging is about more than staying physically healthy. It's also about your emotional health and maintaining your sense of purpose. Tonight, we're joined by Dr. Sarfraz Khan, Chief Medical Officer at Meridian Health Services, and Julie Hale, Wellness Manager at Lifestream Services. Thank you both for joining us for the program tonight. Thank you for having it's us. It's great to have you here. So aging obviously is a big topic. Uh, we had an opportunity to chat a little bit before we started the show, and uh, each of you have a, a little bit different uh, expertise around aging and what we're going to do. Dr. Khan is a physician. Certainly you have a, a scientific knowledge about what happens uh, with the body as we age. What, what are some of the things that you've seen uh, with our population around growing old? I think the, the first thing we need to know that out of all the people who ever touched 65, the half of them are living in this era. So that's something new for many of us. Um, aging is, uh, it's a process. It starts from the childhood. The issue is um, there's a positive aging when you start from a child, you grow, you reach your uh, 20s, your 30s, your maybe 40s, early 40s, and then you know you struggle a little bit because you're not the same. So what happens, you start thinking, well, what do I need to do? And in many situations, you start taking decisions which not only uh, intensify aging, but that makes it worse. So far, the only thing we know about aging which can uh, change aging is the diet. Limiting your calorie intake can slow the aging process. But at the same time, you can do a lot of things to uh, destroy the aging cycle. These are some of the negative things which you hit that affects your DNA and that keeps going, and that is uh, alcohol, cigarette smoking, sedentary lifestyle, unhealthy eating, and over and above, uh, aging is not something which takes away the life from you. It is only looking at the life in a different way. More positive, more interactive, and, and aging gives you few presents. That present is you have a bigger family, you started, you know, maybe the one, you got married, you got children, you got grandchildren. So I think we need to change the outlook of aging a little bit in, uh, in life. There's a little wisdom that comes with the experience of aging too, and we should, we should relish that a little bit more maybe. That, that's so yeah. true. Julie, your role at Lifestream, tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, we provide, as a wellness manager, we provide evidence-based classes. Um, one of them is a matter of balance, fall prevention, um, we find this older generation doesn't like to talk about their fears. They don't like to ask for help. So this is a wonderful class that allows them to talk about their fears, know that others have their fears, and not to limit what they do, but just to be more careful. You know, if they love going to ball games, keep going to ball games, but ask to be seated lower level. You don't have to climb to the top of the field house. Don't stop doing what you like is what I stress just because you're afraid to fall. And it's a wonderful opportunity and they share and they even come up with other ideas. And What other services does Lifestream uh, provide for people as they age? Well, we have our cafe sites um, in all of our counties. We have four here in Delaware County and it's not a meal, free meal. It's a socialization built around a meal. So. They can get out, interact with other people, play cards. Um, they're not sitting in their house 
doing nothing, they're getting out, and it just makes a huge difference. When we think about uh, the aging brain and the chemistry around the aging brain, are there, you, you talked about some things that we shouldn't do. Are there things that people should be doing to help their brain slow the aging process? I think that the most important thing we need to know at this time is uh, aging doesn't take your brain away. Yes, we always talk, you know, in, in our 50s and our 60s, my brain is not the same. But when you look at it, yes, you're, you may have lost some neurons, but out of the millions and trillions you have, the only thing which can happen to you in a professional life is that doesn't hit you till the age of 75. I think that was a really important point that you made. So, if you're working, you can continue to work. And it's not that 75 is a, is a mark. 75 is only when it may affect some people. People can continue to go later. We need to understand, you put the seeds to get the shade at a certain age. If you put the wrong seeds, if you put cactus, you're not really going to get a nice cover. <laughs> so, if you are not in an aging process, which you think you are, actually everybody's in an aging process, spend the time with your wife. Mm -hmm with your children, take care of your parents. So seed, which is going to give you a shade later in the life. Mm -hmm. If you are um, not making enough investments, what you need to make, one is your bodily investment. Eat right, do exercise. I, I would say something which is, uh, when you are lonely, your daughter can hold your hand, but your iPhone is not going to hold your hand yeah. when you're old and you're struggling. You, you build relationships. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the relationships, you would say, which is the best relationship? Well, parents, how old that is since the beginning of the mankind. Children, your spouse. So please do not try to make new investments, which is your social media, the relationships which never exist. Uh, that's a part of the aging. The only thing is you start now. And I think we found in some of our classes, as people talk about their fears, they don't want to be a burden to their, mm -hmm. their families. They don't want to ask them for help. Or, I think a great example is a lady did not go to her granddaughter's wedding in California because she didn't want to slow them all down. She didn't want to ask, to ask to be in a wheelchair. And she said if she had had that class just three weeks, she would have gone because mm -hmm. she would she felt more like she wasn't the only person afraid to ask for help. Mm -hmm. So I tell them, as I have parents who are 70s, um, ask us. We want to help. We want you to keep going. Um, it's never too late to start exercising as long as it's doctor approved. And, you know, we want to be bothered. We want to help you. We want you around as long as possible. So. Talk, I know you've spent much of your uh, adult career <laughs> around wellness and around exercise. Um, what, does Livestream have other classes or what do you recommend to people as they age um, around fitness and activity? Well, staying as active as possible doesn't all, you know, you can go to community centers, you can play cards, as he spoke about, keeping your brain and body mm -hmm. active. Um, if you used to like to play jacks, this came up, I said, what did you do as a child? For fun, I played jacks for hours. Play jacks. Oh, I can't play jacks. I'm 75 years old. Yes, you can. I brought in jacks. We put them on a table. We played them on a table. And the memories that that brought back, I said, do things you used to enjoy as a child. You may not want to ride your bike with your hands in the air, but <laughs> things you can still safely do. There's a kid inside of all of us, and those are special memories. And teach some of those things you did to your children and grandchildren. You know, mm -hmm. some of those are lost mm -hmm. arts with the phones and everything. Mm -hmm. Enjoying life and aging well and having fun, you know, don't be afraid to be a kid. It's also never too late to become physically active. Oh. You know, in, in your 70s or 80s is probably not the time to, to dive into a vigorous exercise no. program, but remaining physically active is still an important part, even if you haven't been physically active uh, in your younger adulthood. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just walking and it's free as long as, you know, you have clear paths and no fall issues. Um, a lot of the senior centers offer Tai Chi or yoga and their local wise have water aerobics, there's mm -hmm. all kinds of things. So 
finding that interest and then you might meet friends that have that same interest. I know at some of our community centers, people have met new friends, started new hobbies just because somebody else has done that. Mm -hmm. So That's great. Um, uh, I know we used to have uh, people who were chair bound still, you know, there are things that you can do there mm -hmm. to keep the body and keep the, keep the joints mobile so that you can still, re you know, remain with a higher quality of life. And we do some of those chair exercises working on joints and stuff, mm -hmm. stability in our matter of balance mm -hmm. fall prevention classes. That's so. great. Dr. Khan, you talked a little bit about social isolation, and I think that's a really important thing around the aging process, particularly as we grow older, many times we, uh, we, we lose close friends or we lose family and spouses. How, how do you uh, suggest that, that as we grow old, we react to that? I would go with the, the old notion that the glass is either half full or you know, it's half uh -huh. empty. You lose people with age, that's a process. But you gain relationships too. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you have lost somebody which was very important, but then you got children, you got grandchildren. And in the world, there are always people who are needing for help. Mm -hmm. We always ask a question, who is the best psychotherapist in the world? And people try to give a name, and the answer is, your grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> so you always ask a question, why there's so much depression, anxiety, substance abuse? Uh, now, what has changed, which was so great for thousands of years, and then in just a matter of a few, uh, maybe 50, 60, 100 years, things have changed. Relationships have to be present relationships have to flourish and that's what human beings are so when you have time whatever your age is there's always somebody in need it may be your great grandchild it may be your spouse it may be your brother life is more about giving which gives happiness to you when you look at your brain in only the uh, the chemicals did you realize there are only a few things which actually give happiness and they did a very nice research and said the smallest thing which gives happiness to a person, that is saying hello. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to understand that aging can be taken in any direction. It is a gift. It's a gift for the people who are younger than you. And it gives you the wisdom, your and my job doesn't end here. Our job is to make a happy generation, to make a better society. There are time comes where um, we have to be off stage. But everybody has to get that time. You cannot really wait for that. Mm -hmm. You have to continue to work on the stage till the time comes. And if time comes, you have done your job, and that gives you the, the happiness. That's what life is all about. And I think I shared some of the intergenerational things, like at our cafe sites. We had a World War II veteran, and we had National Honor Society kids come in to get community service hours. And he likes to do magic tricks. He was showing him magic tricks, and it was a very heartwarming time to see these kids watching this veteran, and he's laughing and sharing with them. So even they weren't family or you know friends, so they're getting through these community centers, intergenerational mm -hmm. times to learn from each other. You know, they're teaching them, here's how you find your pictures on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> and he's teaching them, you know, stories about when he was in World War II. So. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, at Meridian Services, Dr. Khan, are there other special things that you, that you offer people as they grow older? Uh, we do. Uh, there, there were uh, three things. The first one is uh, there's a geriatric psychiatry unit where you understand if things have really gone at a point where someone needs to be hospitalized. We do not need to take them to uh, a bigger city. We can take care of them here. The families are here. That, that's the one part. Second is there's an um, assessment place for elderly. So that's a geriatric assessment uh, clinic. You can bring your near one and dear one. You have to make an appointment, but they can find out what's going on. Um, and over and above, get yourself treated. If you feel you're lonely, mm -hmm. you're depressed, see a psychiatrist. There's nothing wrong in seeing a psychiatrist, seeing a counselor. But giving up is wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's our message, that we physicians uh, give a message that do not let it go. And not Come, get the help. Asking for help. This yeah. is a generation, as we spoke about, yeah. they don't want to ask for help. Yeah. They were taught you handle things, you take care of things yourself. So for them to feel relaxed and know mm -hmm. those opportunities are there and yeah. ask, notice I need help or notice in a friend, 
we teach yeah. them to look out for their friends as well, yeah. somebody that's lost a yeah. spouse. Well, it's up to you to maintain a healthy mindset as you age. So keep active, keep involved, and use the local resources to help you age well. Thanks again to our guests, Thank Dr. You. Sharfraz Khan and Julie Hale. Home accessibility makes living easier no matter what stage of life, and it enables us to live as independently as possible in the face of aging. To successfully age in place, you may need to make minor to sometimes substantial modifications to your home to meet your specific needs. We talked to a certified aging in place specialist to find out more. Uh, to become a certified aging in place specialist, there are three classes one must take. Once you take those classes, you take a national test, and once you pass the test, they certify you as aging in place specialist. Aging in place is a concept by which people are healthier when they age in their home, in their environment, and are safe in their community to still live an uh, independent life. The process generally starts once the physician gives a script, a care manager who works with the client uh, on an ongoing basis. They reach out to myself and or our information assistance department. From there, the resources that they may, or in funding sources that they may qualify for are evaluated. Once that is completed, then I make a visit to the home, have a consultation with the client, and an evaluation of their environment according to their needs. Whether it's a full-scale tear-out or uh, adjustments are made, such as bathroom remodeling, rolling tubs, rolling showers, walk-in showers, wall-hung sinks, an assortment of knobs and uh, push-button items and things of that nature to make it easy to manage for seniors in their home. One of the routine modifications is instead of having doors widen, the door hinge allows the door to fold over another inch and a half. Usually it's all needed to get a wheelchair or a, a assistant device through the doorway for a senior or a person with disabilities. There are other small modifications uh, such as paddled handles on sinks, knobs, scald prevention, apparatuses, threshold ramps, just a small bump at a door entrance. Sometimes having that modified means a lot to a senior that's trying to manage that, that step. We do have modifications that allow us to install stoves with side opening doors for people that may be wheelchair bound. Also, there are sinks that have knobs that sit closer to the edge of the counter. They, they can be lowered in the cabinetry. There are cabinets that we open up and they slide out sideways for they can enter, get it from both ends. If you have a, a second story house or a staircase, we have motorized staircase lifts that can take you from one floor to the next. Sometimes the yard is not conducive to putting in wood ramps. So there we have lifts that lift them up. There are several funding sources available, which when you work with our information assistance department, where you land according to your uh, resources that you have is how the funding source is decided. Lifestream does also offer private pay uh, resources for home, home modifications. A lot of seniors that do have the resources to purchase their own modifications do not have the ability to discuss with contractors what the process is to stay on top of the process and to manage the process from start to finish. I do not have caregivers available to do that. Lifestream does offer a source for that. We realize that our health is declining and those things thought up early on in the process makes it easier for the adaptations to be done over a time span. And when you're actually buying a house, and you think you're gonna live there forever, then you would wanna consider some of those situations about how you enter your house, clean your house, maintain the guttering, lawn, shrubbery, things like that. Even contractors are building homes that are designed with long-term living concepts incorporated within the structure of new home building. I just feel that the certified agent in place specialist or the home modification side of the healthcare industry is very vital to independent living for seniors. 
a lot of seniors would not be able to maintain independent living within their own home if we were not making small adaptations and in, in those those changes within the home and or accessibility changes from the outside to get in. If you are in need of a certified aging in place specialist, visit the National Association of Home Builders website to find one in your area. Staying active and being involved in the community are good ways to help you age well. Many times, senior centers will fill a void in an older person's life, providing various programs and activities to participate in, connecting people to community services, and a place for social interactions. Our senior programming the last four or five years is up probably about 150, 175%. Um, with that growth, we were looking at possibly needing more space. The community developer saw an opportunity for us to apply for a grant, which helped pay for part of this facility. This area, once it's finalized, we'll have a coffee bar behind me, we'll have a tea bar, we'll have the TV rolling, we'll have the newspapers in here, so people are just welcome to come in and sit. Our community center is used for the entire community, so we'll have children in in the afternoon, we'll have other people coming in as well, but this is only for senior citizens so that we can help keep growing our programming. Um, we're looking at adding classes uh, through the afternoons and evenings with the Senior Center. We have been working with other partners like uh, the Crown Point facility in town, uh, Miller's Mary Manor, uh, Jay County Hospital. We have um, a live stream lunch, which is free to anyone who's 60 and over. We also have clubs that come into the community center. So we have card club, bingo club, craft club, knitting and wood carving club. We are going to have movie night once a month. We do have a senior day celebration every single year. We have had live stream services come over with a matter of balance class. Uh, guest speakers from the Jay County Hospital come over. We offer programming for basically 55 plus. Um, there's a lot of options for really any capacity and any ability. How I'm involved is I basically teach uh, senior class every day and then also I manage the fitness center and I greet all the seniors in the morning when they come in early. It's, sometimes there'll be people come for my class sometimes an hour early. They socialize and they connect. I partake of the exercise and um, my favorite activity mainly is watching David Wade. He is a card. Uh, we dance, we laugh, it's, uh, his class is just fantastic. Also, I like to come early and say hello and visit with as many people as I can before we begin. And I teach a silver sneakers class that deals with uh, strength, flexibility, balance, movement, trying to help them with uh, what they call active daily living exercises. It keeps us moving. If you don't keep exercising and you don't keep moving, you're just gonna sit at home and that'll be the end. Senior Center, the community center, keeps the senior population engaged. It keeps them in town. Um, it keeps them healthy. It keeps them active. It gives them a quality of life um, type of place for them to take advantage of. I play euchre twice a month, and that's fun. We have a lot of people, about six tables, and I exercise two times a week and walk. Well, I come usually with Janet. We talk with Janet. I come with, and she She'll be 89, I'm going to be 88. I come with Edith, she's going to be 88. Kind of the old ladies. Well, I've been coming about six years, but several times I've had an illness, I couldn't come. Some of these girls had bugged me and called me, get back up here, and if I hadn't, I'm not sure I'd be, be here. It just gets me out of the house. It gets me moving for my knees, and I get to talk to all these people. And I got to know Sarah. We yes. worked uh, some of the marathons, like oh, yes, handing out water and yes. things like that. I didn't know Sarah before I got no. into the program. And, and we encourage each other. We've yeah. got, we're on Facebook together. This is good for me to come here and be with other people, exercise, serve the lunches. I really do want to um, you know, urge anyone who's at home sitting at home, watching TV, watching the news, reading a newspaper, come here and do that. Um, there's really no pressure to join classes. There's really no pressure to join clubs. If you just want to come here and hang out and drink coffee, that's perfectly fine as well. If you're lonely, come play cards. If you're lonely, come and visit and exercise. Uh, if you don't, you're missing out. It's here, come take advantage of it. I, I just think it's great that we have this to do because it's very important for good health and being able to remain independent. We have great fellowship here, we really do. It's just a great facility and we're very proud of it. It's time for the Wellness Matters Well-Informed segment, providing an extra bit of information about services, 
resources, or tips to help you lead a healthy and well life. While we aren't guaranteed days and we can't predict the events in our medical future, what we can do is prepare. If you've never thought about any of the issues around end of life or you don't know where to start, try the Conversation Starter Kit, which is available at theconversationproject.org. It walks you through some of the important topics to think about during end of life care. For example, it asks you to fill in the statement, what matters most to me is, maybe it's staying in home with home care or being as comfortable as possible. When you feel comfortable with your feelings and decisions, talk with your loved ones and your doctor about them. Advanced directives include the following forms, a living will, power of attorney, healthcare representative, and the out of hospital do not resuscitate order. These documents allow you to put your wishes into writing and ensure that your healthcare decisions will be respected should you be unable to voice your wants and needs. Let me explain a little more about some of these forms and terms. A living will is a document that specifies which life prolonging treatments you do or do not want, such as artificial nutrition or a respirator. Life prolonging procedures proclamation is used if you want all life prolonging treatments and procedures to extend your life. A power of attorney is an individual who you designate to handle your affairs if you become unable to. This document must be signed in front of a notary public by both parties and is revocable at any time. A healthcare power of attorney, healthcare representative, or healthcare proxy is someone that you designate to make healthcare decisions for you if you're unable to voice your wishes. Be sure to discuss your wishes with this person. Ask them if they're comfortable making these decisions for you. The out-of-hospital do not resuscitate order. This document is used to indicate to EMS outside the hospital if you do not want to receive CPR. The physician's orders for scope of treatment, or sometimes the post form. This document is a direct physician order that reflects your wishes in regards to CPR, medical interventions, the use of antibiotics, and artificial nutrition. It allows you space for additional orders and to identify your healthcare representative. It must be signed by a physician. It's never too early to think about your advanced directives, and they can be changed or updated as your health and wishes change. If you completed some of these documents years ago, it may be a good idea to review them. Terms of these documents vary state to state. More information about advanced directives can be found through these resources, and you can contact your local hospital for more information. I'm Hannah Morrow, Care Manager at Lifestream Services. Thank you for letting me keep you well informed. Thanks for joining us for Wellness Matters, Aging Well. Find new things to enjoy, learn to adapt to the changes as you age, and try to stay as physically and socially active as possible so you can enjoy your senior years. Visit WIPB.org or go to our Facebook page for more links, videos, and resources on aging. Until next time, be well.